Now, back when I went to Burning Mountain, I saw Avalon Life, and one of the tracks that he played was Dust Till Dawn. There's this really cool section in there where it's just really, really powerful, and I think part of that is the layering technique. <laughs> So I want to spend some time in today's video actually talking about that and exploring some of the things that you can do to make powerful lead segments by using layering. So I'm just going to play the example that I have here. This is the recording that I have of that same part of the track. Now, it might be a little bit hard to hear the different elements of the track in here. And in fact, it is hard for me to hear as well. Uh, there might be parts here in this kind of like recreation where the elements aren't correct or the rhythm isn't correct or the melody isn't correct, stuff like that. I mainly want to talk about the principle though. So nothing like that is actually going to matter for what this video is about. So what I want to start with is just a playthrough of kind of like a similar idea here. And I think the idea that makes this work is the fact that we have very modulated elements like this asset line over here, as well as these static elements down here. Now looking quickly through these elements for the sound design, what we can see is that they're all very, very simple patches. This is just your kind of basic asset patch where you have a very high resonance here. In fact, it is even modulated by the envelope to go a little bit higher. The macro is also controlling the filter cutoff so that we can change the color of the asset sound over time. That is the automation that you saw before. And then we have some tube distortion, a little bit of hyper for some stereo width, and then we're just removing the lower frequencies. When it comes to this other group, I wanted to have two different gritty tones, one for this very, very long stab and the other one for the kind of rhythm synth that you hear. So the way that I made these is just starting from a tone from the tone spec. This is uh, from the tone spec volume two. We again introduce some stereo with. In this case, what I'm doing is a little bit of coloring before the distortion. This really helps with the kind of tonality that you want. And then we have this very aggressive asymmetrical distortion to make it sound gritty and warm. The asymmetry in this case is important because I also wanted a little bit of more of a weightier feeling. The reason why you want your distortion to be asymmetrical in this case is so that you're generating saw wave harmonics. If you're using something like a tube where the bottom end and the top end are the exact same, you're only going to get square wave harmonics. If you want all of the harmonics from the saw wave harmonic series, then you would need to use something asymmetrical, which as you can see right here, just means that the lowest part of the graph is different from the highest part of the graph. If you don't like this exact tone, you can also make an asymmetrical one yourself by using the shaper here where you just set the point in the middle and then you draw in whatever kind of distortion shape that you want as long as they're asymmetrical again. But for this one, the normal asymmetrical modes seem to work well. And then to bring out all of the frequencies and really get that grittiness out there, we're using the multi band compressor. Little bit of EQ in here, again, just to remove some of the low frequencies and also a little bit of the high frequencies. I had this set a little bit lower before, but I thought that having it a little bit higher just makes it come through a little bit more. The reason why you maybe want to lower this a little bit is so that you can put a little bit more focus on these other elements. In this case, what you'll hear is that this sound kind of sits back a little bit more. It just depends on the musical idea that you want to go for. Do you want this long step sound to be really, really aggressive and in your face? Or do you want the other synths to have a little bit more presence over this sound? The last synth is another very simple synth. To be honest, I didn't do a lot of sound design for this. I mainly wanted to focus on the layering part. What we have here is two tones, again, from the tones pack. And we're using one with a little bit of detune and five voices just to get some extra stereo with. They both go into, again, a very strong asymmetrical distortion. And in this case, we're also using the envelope to make it a little bit plucky and a little bit more dynamic. Now, before we continue by looking at the rhythm and the way that these elements interact, I do quickly want to say that if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking and subscribing. Also, if you want to support me financially, check out my products on Gumroad or go to my Patreon page where you will find benefits for the channel as well as discount codes for my products, which means that if you're planning on buying products, you can go quickly to my Patreon, grab a few discount codes and get a little bit of discount on my products. Links for both of them are going to be in the description. With that being said, let's get back into the video. Now, when it comes to the actual layering, what I think is interesting is one, the fact that, as I said before, we're layering some very 
like dynamic elements in the sense that they are changing a lot with some very static elements in the sense that they don't change at all. There's no actual modulations or automations on this sound. So this sound is always playing in the same way, both of these. Whereas as you can see from the macro automation right here, this sound is constantly changing in various different ways. You can also see that this sound is melodic in nature in that you can also see that this sound is melodic in nature so that we're playing a melody here. We're mainly doing some kind of like octave jumps here, but there is a little bit of a melody in here. These are just the kind of lower octaves to, to support the main asset melody, which in this case is this. Apart from here, where we have this little variation at the end here, this variation is just in there to make sure that there's a little bit more difference than just the automation between this part and this part. And you can hear that in the original as well. Now, as I said before, I'm probably not going to nail the melody that we have here, and I'm probably not getting the sound design quite right as well. That is not the idea. I just wanted to show you this kind of layering technique. Now, playing it through, I did hear that there is a little bit more variation to this part as well, specifically with the asset line here. I also know for a fact that this melody is more complex than I have laid out right here. In this case, what I've done is I have just looked kind of at the melody that we have here, and I've taken some parts of that. So for example, these three notes are also being played here, here, and here. I've just added a few extra notes in there. And what I did then is I just kind of repeated that over again. So the way that this melody came about is really, I just took this section. You can see I duplicated it and then I removed at least the part with the stab here. And then in this case, I also removed this. And now you can see we're back to the original melody that we had before. So basically what's happening here is that we have this two beat pattern. And one, we're making space just for the step to exist. And two, we're just making a little bit of extra space here. One, for this melody to kind of come through a little bit, but also to make sure that it's not just the same rhythm over and over again. If I were to play that extra note in here, you would probably hear that it's going to be really, really boring because it's just kind of the same two bar rhythm over and over again. Removing that extra note actually helps it stay a little bit more interesting. So here is it without notes so that we can compare. So when it comes to making these kind of like synth combination things where you're layering multiple synths, what is important is one, having a few different types of elements. So we have the long staff, we have the short kind of FM sound, and we have the acid lining. These are three different sounds in terms of the exact kind of type of sound that it is and the functionality that it has within the musical idea. This is melodic. This is adding like melodic interest and it's very modulated over time. This is a long, powerful stab and this is just your short kind of gritty synth to keep it interesting and to keep it rhythmical. So that's the first important thing. The second important thing is the synergy between the elements. As I said before, this rhythm here is basically trying to enforce this melody by always playing a note on these higher parts here obviously with exception of the parts where we've left it out and the reason why we've left it out here is so that we have space for this other sound to play that's another part of the synergy here in the sense that you don't want to continue this rhythmical gritty synth on top of this other gritty synth because then the other gritty synth won't come through the mix it's just going to sound cluttered and like that there's too much going on at the same time so that's really all there is to it uh, when it comes to the things that I wanted to explain. Uh, I don't think that there's anything else that I need to say about it. To be honest, I didn't think that I could say this much about just three very simple synth sounds. But the interesting part is the way that they're interacting and the way that they're layering. And what really grabbed my attention is just how powerful this element was in the original track when I first heard it at Burning Mountain. And even listening back to it now, it is a really, really powerful track and it's a really, really powerful piece. So I just wanted to make a video on that, highlighting all of the things that you can do to actually achieve that yourself. So with that, we've come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.